Hi everyone, how are you today? Hope every one of you is doing fantastic. I want to give you a big warm welcome to our new series, We Share the Change. Accompany us to a kind series to explore the intersections that make life wonderful and give yourself a chance to examine your journey. Our June series is very close to our heart because it speaks about the essence and vision of Luan's Emotional Museum. We're not alone. We're more than 7.9 billion people on Earth, all of us sharing the same space. But we not only share the physical space, we share moments, dreams, art, reflection. We share the same future. So if we were going together, we need to share the responsibility as well, not only of arriving at the future, but making it better. And to achieve it, we must be conscious of our decisions because in the end, we can share the change for a better future. Come to us into this journey of joy, reflection, and good questions about change. And we have some big news for you. For a June Digital Experience, we want to bring to the table the essence of our life as human beings, stories and conversations, because we believe we can change the world one conversation at a time. I would like to welcome today Luan's Director of Innovation and Education, Yanira Matienzo, to talk about what we're cooking today. Yanni, please welcome. Hi, everyone. I hope you are fantastic. And Marion and I are really happy to share with you our new adventure because this global community is so beautiful and it's uh, an inspiration for, for us that we want to share with you our new project. This is our um, digital space where we can share uh, with you all the stories, all the content, all the reflection that is in Luan. And I want to um, share my screen and tell you more about the experience we have for you. This is Stories Before Answers. Uh, Marion, can you tell us a little bit what is the Stories Before Answers? Of course, yeah. This experience is in a creative and inspiring virtual environment where every one of us can enjoy more than 20 pieces of content we can explore at our own pace in an interactive map with video and audio. Jan is going to share a little bit of her screen so you can see a little bit of you know, what we have prepared for you. We collaborated with many artists around the world, including illustrators, including you know, voiceover, including musicians, and many others you know, to create this experience we will we will having our weekly um events with guest experts uh for toolkits and call to action guides pdfs that's really easy to download and to keep with you and you know bringing to everywhere that you want to go with having you know all of those information and all of those content and uh, we'll be adding new content every day within our global community spaces we are yes. delighted to be with this yes this is um this, this map is illustrated by David Espinosa. He's a Mexican artist. And you can explore all the content in this uh, beautiful map, uh, be with calm and be with pause and, and have one moment for you and explore audios, videos, uh, reading materials like Marion says. And um, this is one of the uh, important parts in, inside the experience. And the other thing is that you, are, you can have access to a digital community, a private space where you can share your stories, share your thoughts about the content. And for example, you can see in, this, in the screen um, the, one of the content and people sharing their reflections and what are they thinking uh, about their story, about the dilemmas. So imagine this space full of art, full of reflection and full of takeaways that you can act right away in your community, in your life, uh, to transform your journey, to change your narrative. So um, this is a beautiful space and we want to invite every one of you to come with us to experiment this new project with us. And we have a special gift for you, a very special, um, uh, how do you say it, Mariona? This is a, 
uh, um, a good promotion for all of you from Luan community. Exactly, and also in this in, in this uh, platform, you can you know get together with other people from Luan community. You know, maybe people that you already know from Luan Live, right? And start you know different interactions. It's full of different experiences. It's micro content, so you know it's it's really easy. You know, it's already digested and really you know easy to um, to consume. And all of the experiences that we have inside uh, inside the platform are based on Luan's pedagogic uh, methodology. And that has to do a lot with, um, you know, starting with artists' social reflection and presenting ethical dilemmas. So then we can integrate, motivate, guide, and question, help unlock ourselves, you know, to reach to the third stage that's about motivation on action. Because what we're focused on is, you know, we want to kind of like bring, you know, these new elements to uh, bring more um, ethical change agents into the world. I don't know, Yanni, if you would like to complement on something on the pedagogic model that we use inside Luan. Yes, everything in Luan is think with three elements. We need art to inspire us. We need a reflection to solve the dilemmas, to ask better questions, to listen to stories. And, you, and we need to act, we need to practice, we need to experiment. And everything is because we know we can build a better world with all of you and we can share the change. So um, here is again the map. So you can uh, subscribe in the, um, in the link that Ceci is going to uh, put in the chat. And also if you want, uh, you can explore more uh, about Luan in our website and feel free to download one of the toolkits here in this section. And I will, uh, we will love to answer your questions and to have this moment with you in this, uh, in this space. It's a new adventure and, and we are really happy to, to be with you. Yes, come join us and we promise that you will always be inspired. That's her promise to you. So Ceci will drop you know, the information here on the chat if you guys would like to join. It's a special prize for the Luan community. And I hope uh, to see you there in that platform. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Marion. Thank you. So let's continue with today's you know, amazing speakers that we have. Uh, before introducing today's distinguished speakers, I would like to briefly share some speaking requests to help make today's session more interactive and engaging for all of you who have joined. At the bottom of the screen, you will see a control panel with a chat. Please go there now and write your name, country of residence, and your organization. In the control panel, you also find the questions section. You are encouraged to engage directly with other panelists by posting a questions for them in the questions box. Please have in mind that you need to select the options sent to all panelists and attendees for everyone to see your post or question. And please submit them as early as possible in the session as there will be a limit to how many can be answered. Before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Marion from Luan Emotional Museum and I want to thank you all so much for being here today with us. I see in the chat box that we have people from all over the world and this is very, very exciting. It is my deep pleasure to welcome today Adana Aguilar and Enrique Siqueiros. Adana and Enrique are philosophers, educators, musicians, with more than 15 years of experience helping people to find their voice. Their mission is to rehabilitate the use of soft skills to improve human relationships on a personal, professional, and social level. In addition to their activities as university professors and marketing and political advisors, they founded Rotor, a consultancy that combines the pedagogic styles derived from arts, music, storytelling, dancing, and sports, such as mountain climbing, box, volleyball, to help people become better leaders, communicators, and citizens. In today's session, listen, intonate, harmonize, how music helps us to be compassionate, we will use music as a metaphor. Participants will reflect on the need of compassion as a social virtue. We will practice specific tips and apply practical tenets to develop compassion through musical exercises involving listening, singing, and a little bit of dancing. I encourage you today to be introspective, to let yourself play, and to enjoy this experience. 
Let's have fun together and let Enrique and Adán walk us through this enriching experience. Enrique and Adán, welcome. Thank you so much for being here today with us. It's truly a pleasure. Marion, thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you everyone for being here. We hope that this little time that we're going to be sharing with you is as fruitful and as fun as Enrique and I were having fun and learning a lot when we were preparing this little experience for you. I will Thank share you. my uh, screen. Thank you, Mario. Thank you, Janira. We are happy to share our passions. Okay, so the experience that we are inviting you to live today and go through with us is called Listen, Intonate and Harmonize, how music helps us to be more compassionate. Okay, compassion needs a need in, the, in nowadays. We have been through a pandemic, we're still in a place in our society where we need from each other. And we have learned to believe that, that actually we need the interactions between each other. There is no possibility of success in human beings if we don't connect. What's the thing? The thing is that if we don't learn to connect, well, it will be very difficult. It's not a, an automatic thing to do. That's why we present music first as a metaphor to understand how compassion works, because com being compassionate is something very difficult. We can get the idea, but to become ourselves uh, compassionate beings, it could be very difficult. So first music as a metaphor, and then music as a therapy, music as an exercise to be more compassionate. That's what we are going to be sharing through some reflections and some activities that, of course, you are well invited to practice there at home. And maybe if you are a little bit uh, brave, maybe participate even with us. So Enrique, please tell us, why do we need to understand compassion through so many things? Thank you, Adan. So as philosophers, let's start with a question. How was it possible that such a weak, skinny, and hairless animal could survive the evolutionary race and go from being a threatened species to dominating the earth for better and for worse? The answer is so simple and so complex at the same time, because we are social mammals, independent, interdependent animals. We are the only animal that can cooperate both flexibly and in large numbers. And that's why the, the, the next a quote is from the philosopher Aristotle. He says in politics that humans are social animals by, our, by nature. In our inner and deepest nature, we are interdependent. And not only we are going to address a philosopher, we also in the next, we are going to address an economist to try to go to the root of our intellectual foundations of compassion. Adam Smith, the father of modern economics, we think of uh, him talking about self-interest, but in his most important work, Theory of Moral Sentiment, he states how selfish soever people may be supposed, there are evidently some principles in our nature which interest us in the fortune of others and render their happiness necessary to us, but we derive nothing from it except the pleasure of seeing it. What he's saying is that compassion and that empathy is the foundation of society. Uh, we just remember him about uh, talking about self-interest, but no, the foundation of society is compassion. What it means to be social. We have an, an emotional apparatus that links us spontaneously. That is the ability of feel compassion. And in the next, we have not only a an philosopher and an economist, but also a poet, a writer, and, and a contemporary author. We know that art is a privileged door to human experience. Art teaches that in some sense we are interconnected. In art, she said, Elif Shafak, there, are, there is no them, there is only the other is me. Human interdependence is a biological and an economical fact, as we have seen, but also it's an aesthetic goal. It's beautiful in itself. We need others to survive. We need each other uh, to develop, and we need e each other to live a happy life. We are interconnected, and compassion is the key to the most primitive way of bonding. Okay, understand, understanding compassion is so complex 
that a single definition is not enough. We need a transdisciplinary approach, philosophical, behavioral economics, through art, through religion, and another powerful language that is music. And Adan is going to talk about that. Thank you, Enrique. You know, I'm always very, very motivated whenever someone says that music is a, a universal language. Of course, this uh, claim, it's a little bit complex. We know that music is very different through cultures, times, groups of people. There are some musical ideas that will be very strange for, I don't know, for example, someone that is educated in conservatoire music from Europe, into, you know, the so-called classical music. That person could have some challenges when we listen, I don't know, maybe some uh, music from indigenous communities in the, in the south of Asia, for example, or maybe, I don't know, I love dancing, whatever, whatever music you put me, and uh, Enrique can, can a little bit laugh with me about that because I love dancing at any occasion or at any um, teasing. But of course, there will be things that you can put me some rhythms from, from the music that you love from your country, and maybe I don't know even how to move or how to react. So of course, saying that music is a universal language, it's a complicated thing to say. But what we can understand and maybe we can share is that we are musical beings in the way that this art, the art of sounds, echoes our human essence, echoes the way we understand and we perceive life. For example, you know, in the next slide, we can see that there are two main elements for music. The first main, main element would be rhythm. The notes that happened during a certain uh, period of time. You know, for example, imagine if I would be singing, I don't know, happy birthday. But if I change the rhythm, if I sing the same notes without the rhythm, you wouldn't understand happy birthday because I could say and I'm more now, I don't know, creating a romantic ballad instead of a happy birthday song. So rhythm is the time where music is happening. But also not only time, but content, the tone. We know that sound is the vibration of air. No? If the sound vibrates in a certain frequency, we're having a tone. And that's the, so to speaking, content of the music. I could sing also happy birthday to you, but without the tone. I could say the same rhythm without the tone. Look at me. The, the normal uh, way would be happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. What happens if I take out the content? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Enrique, happy birthday to you. You can understand more or less that it's a happy birthday song, but poor Enrique would be suffering the coma and you can sing it better. You know? So that's the thing. Music happens in a time with a content. Imagine now how do we experience things in life? And that's the next idea. In life, we live through moments. We have our childhood. We have uh, our years in college. We have our years in school. We have our adult years. And maybe we'll have our days as an old, uh, as, a, as a grandpa, as a grandma. Who knows? So we live through time. We were born in one moment and we will be uh, dying in one moment. We live through time. But not only we are beings that happen to be there, there is also a meaning that we have from each moment that we live. The meaning of, I don't know, my memories from when I was a kid and I was playing football or the memories when I was learning to play cello, that those things are meanings attached to moments. That's the time and the content. So in a way, our life is like a song because it has rhythm, it has moments, and also it has a tone, it has meaning, it has a content. These conditions of rhythm and tone, we can find them all over, all over the world, in every culture. And with these two elements, we could say that music is a universal language. And I have a little video prepared for you in the next slide. In this slide, I will talk a little bit over the, over, over the, the video. The, only, the, the main idea of this video is to understand and feel 
how everything we do happens with the rhythm. Everything that we do happens in a time. Let's try to listen. I think there's no sound, guys. We can't hear it. Maybe Ceci can can share with the uh, with sound. Two seconds. Hey. This community in Central Africa is talking about the importance of living in life. By the way, they are the creators of the djembe. I don't know if you know this instrument. This instrument is like a drum that has this shape of a, of a sand clock. And they are the creators. No? We will share the, the video in the, in the chat because it's really interesting and it's longer than what we have here. Look at what he says. C'est du rythme. Tous les choses, c'est du rythme. Don't worry, the, the video will continue. The idea is the things that we do, for example, here, no? some repetitive actions to prepare the rice, to go to the fields, and then when they cut the tree to create and, and to, to build that djembe and this, this drum that I was telling you, everything is rhythm. But even, even let's go deeper into this idea. We are rhythm. When we were in the in the our mother's womb, we were nine months next to a uh, subwoofer <laughs> that was the heart of our mom, you know, bumping all the time. Tum -tum, tum -tum, tum -tum. So even before we were born, we were rhythm. If you want to be compassionate, you need to listen to the rhythm of others because we are a song. And then in the next video, we can think about not only the rhythm that is natural to us, that is part of our human existence, but also tone. You know that, that uh, we use the pentatonic scale from almost every culture in musical culture in life. Let's hear how Bobby McFerrin shows this.
interesting to me about that is, regardless of where I am, anywhere, every audience gets that. But it doesn't if, matter, you know, that's just, you know, the pentatonic scale for some reason. If you're looking for a job in neuroscience, I think. <laughs> So something happens in our DNA, something happens in our human experience that we are rhythm, that our activities have a rhythm, that we recognize tones, that even as Bobby McFerry showed, every audience, every uh, human group has some idea of notes. So we live through a meaning, we live through a time. That's why Beethoven dared to say music is a higher revelation than all wisdom and philosophy. And following his example, let's see if music can help us to understand and be better human beings through compassion. But first, let's understand what would happen if something doesn't work in our musical being, if we are somehow disconnected. What happens when we can connect? What happens when we can synchronize and intonate? Well, well we cannot connect. And Joker is a masterpiece of this disconnection. So uh, through Art of Leck in the next, we're going to see the more deep loneliness that is the way in which you cannot intonate and, and synchronize. And I want to ask, is there a more, a more deep loneliness in you, the universe that when you tell a joke and nobody laughs? Adam knows about this uh, with his dad jokes. but. Uh, no, as social animals, all human beings need, in some measure, recognition, understanding, and acceptance. We need to be subjects of compassion to avoid loneliness, to avoid depression, and to avoid aggression at the end. Through art, the Joker shows us the psychology of someone incapable of connecting and failing to be subject of compassion. In the next uh, scene, we are going to see the, the time when he shows this lack of capability. <laughs> it's nice to see these couples out at my show. I have a wife. We love to role play. Yes, yes, very sexy. My favorite one right now is professor and senior who really needs to pass my class to graduate. Yes. So I'll tell you how I operate. I'm a professor at a prestigious New England university. <laughs> and my wife is a senior in my intro to Western Civ. <laughs> I know, I know. Why is, she, why is she a senior in the intro? I didn't buy it either. <laughs> she comes to me during my office hours. It's Monday and Wednesday, 3 to 5. She says, excuse me, Professor Lewis. I can't use my real last name at this college because they don't hire Jews. <laughs> Something I'll address once I have tenure, but for now. So Arthur Flick has some kind of arrhythmia. Arrhythmia is a problem with the rate or rhythm of the heartbeat. But he, here we can see how his psychological or social arrhythmia doesn't allow him to connect with people, to laugh with people. According to, the, according to the neurologist Robert Hurd, at least 30% of world population have a psychological difficulty to follow the rules. And some even have a tendency to break the rules because guys, sometimes rules, tone, rhythm are hard for them to follow. They are too aggressive for their national, natural affections. Have you tried to follow a metronome for the first time? Have you tried to follow foreign rules for the first time? It's very aggressive. They are very aggressive with our, uh, uh, for our affections. So in the next slide, we're going to see what happened is that don't fool yourself thinking that Arthur Fleck is a black swan, is someone atypical, because rules sometimes get extremely hard to many people to follow. Think about the rhythms of our market. They are very aggressive in our production and consumption or the complexity of our legal system. Many people just can't keep up with our rules on the contemporary world. The key, uh, as the neurologist says, is to try to be even more compassionate with these children, not to push them because you are going to break them. 
There is a great challenge in big cities when everyone is anonymous and we are going too fast, like Gotham City. But Gotham City is also New York, is also Sydney, is also Mexico City, is the big cities of the world. Now, who can follow the rules? Who can play by the rules? Adan is gonna show us that there is a way. There is a certain way that maybe you don't, you don't expect to have this way. You would be expecting someone that follows the rules you know, in a very strict way, but we have a, a little idea for you. If we are thinking about the Joker as a failed comedian, remember he wanted to make people laugh. Let's now think how a, a, a really legendary comedian does it, how timing helps him to make, to make other people laugh and thus connect with them. To know that Robin Atkinson in the next slide, we can see this beautiful picture of Mr. Bean, of course, if you don't know, if you don't know this character, please search for him in the net because it's amazing. No, it's brutal. <laughs> Mr. Bean was a character developed by Rowan Atkinson during his studies in Oxford University. So imagine, no, you are studying a master's in engineering, studying super hard, and suddenly you, you come up with this idea of a character that is a great comedian. It's classic comedy, as Sophia says. No? Why does it work? because it goes to the minimum. It's not speaking. It's only representing uh, common daily activities. You know, when he goes to the supermarket, when he's driving, when he's cooking, but it's the idea of doing everything in a certain way with body comedy, with physical comedy. He connects because he understands timing and he delivers. In the next slide, we, can, we could think, no, well, what is a great joke or what's the key of connecting no timing recognizing the rhythm of the audience and the rhythm of the things that you are sharing to be relatable that we can be feel that we are in the same situation or at least something similar and of course that helps to connect the next slide what do we need to be more compassionate if we are music and the philosophers the economists and the artists are telling us that it is needed to be compassion it is needed to be connected with each other. First, let's understand compassion and then understand how music can help us to create a more compassionate practice. So Adan wants to share with uh, you our suffering learning Greek and Latin in the philosophy faculty. So we want to go to the root, to the origin of the word. Sometimes if you don't know a word, maybe you can go to the origin and it's simple to understand the complexity. So. Many people think that compassion just, uh, the, the meaning is suffer with others. That is the Latin sense. Come together and pati to suffer. But in the translation, we lost many, many uh, things. And that is because, and that's why we cannot uh, be compassionate that easy. So it has the same root, compassion, with empathy. And that is very important. What is empathy? What is compassion? Uh, and you can write in, 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 in the chat box. Um, I, I was reading Vanessa Farr. Yes, uh, we should get familiar with Stephen Porges. We are gonna uh, search for him. So uh, what is empathy and what is compassion? Latin is not enough in this case. The thing is that if you think that to be compassionate is just to suffer with another, there is a problem here. Because you, you cannot suffer together if you don't learn how, how to enjoy it together, how to get excited together, how to get aroused, how to be happy, how to be afraid, even feeling sick. So you have to learn all these uh, sentiments, feelings, to learn how to suffer with others. So first, compassion is empathy, to be in someone else's skin. And that's why when you go to the root uh, pathos. It's a very strong word in the Greek dictionary. It, it almost has one page of meanings. Pathos is many things. It's experience. It's what happened to Oedipus, Oedipus the king. You know what happened to him. It's horrible. But it is a, a circumstance. It's also suffering, yes. It's also sickness. But it's also passion, emotion, and feeling. 
So if you want to be more compassionate, you have to learn also to enjoy with others, to be happy and, and to be excited with others. So this is the, the we travel a, a little to the Greek world to have the meaning of, of compassion. And why? Because today's challenge is to fight empathy. Uh, so I'm sorry, apathy. Why apathy? It comes from the same root. A without pathy, pathos, without feeling. Today, many of us, we are hyper stimulated and we are very tired. We cannot feel anymore. We are apathy. We have apathy in this sense. So what do, you, do we need to be more compassionate? Adan is going to share with us. And this, <laughs> yes, the musical compassion, we're going to see, we're going to share with you our favorite uh, idea about compassion that is a virtuous circle of compassion. We're going to see that there are three moments, three stages of compassion that you can exercise every day. And the first one is, of course, to listen. There are three parts and this, the first one is to listen to the feelings of others. And to listen, it is to be in silence. That is a lost capability of, of nowadays. The second, because if you don't, you are not in silence, you are not going to hear. The second is to be vulnerable, to allow you to feel. If you all the time are taking care and you are not going to feel what other people are feeling, then you can listen. And what you can listen, you can listen rhythm and tone can we get back to to listen please yes listen uh, we we are going to list, listen rhythm and tone so first imagine a uh, rhythm remember that time when you were in high school and you were in love remember that time how was your heartbeat do you remember do you remember in a normal day your rhythm is like this. When, when you're in love, all your rhythm changes. And if you don't know yourself, you are going to push too much. And that is the cue, the clue. Remember that if when you send a, a message to, I don't know, to Laura, you were in love with Laura, you send a message and you say, how, how are you? And I don't know, uh, she didn't answer in seven minutes. Okay, seven minutes. For Laura, seven minutes are seven minutes. And for you, seven minutes is an eternity. That's why if you don't know yourself, know your rhythm, you are going to push your couple, you're going to push people, and you're going to be even, in some cases, aggressive. What, on the other side, what happened when you don't have the energy to keep up with the rhythm of our, uh, of our friends, of our couple, that you're going to be left behind? So this is the first thing to listen, to the rhythm of, your, of the people, of your friends, of the environment. But to listen, you have to be silent. The second one is to hear the tone. To hear the tone is even more difficult because the tone is not so easy to listen. I'm going to show you two ex ex examples to hearing the tone. I'm going to ask you to write in the chat box what do you feel on the first and on the second. Yes, we are uh, in part one in listen. Listen to this. So this is the first rounds of chords. Listen to the second. <laughs> exactly. Richard James Clark, that is La Bamba, uh, exactly. So, but exactly, Marcela, 
that, that here is a philosophical program. I'm, I'm not going to address this because we are not going to finish. But somehow, the first round of chords sound sad. And the second sound of chord uh, round sound happy, sound uh, excited, exactly, calm and excited. How on earth sound that are waves traveling through time and space and hitting your ear, they are, they have a meaning. How on earth the sound have a meaning? How can you say that this sound is sad and this sound is happy? Well, this is a philosophical, very, very uh, nice problem. But what I want to address here is that if you listen, because in some cultures it's not that simple, some minor chords, they don't, they don't uh, sound sad and some major chords, they don't sound happy. But as, uh, as we hear, sometimes we have to listen to people's tone to see if they are nostalgic, uh, sad, happy and Again, you have to be in silent because the nuances are very difficult. So you have the first part of the compassionate circle that is to listen. Let's go to the second part. Thank you, Enrique. The second part, it's more about us. The first part, listen, is the attention we give to others. You know, the presence, the, as Enrique was saying, to be silent so that we can hear the rhythm and the tone of others. The second part is, do I have something to intonate with that that I'm hearing? Have I felt like this? Can I feel what the people that, that, are, that I'm listening are feeling? Of course, we could always say that we can intonate because we are all human beings and we are part of the same human experience. Let's, ma let's make an exercise to understand more or less how do we um intonate or, or if we have the, the enough skill and ear to intonate with others as a metaphor of course let me give you a tone and i hope that enrique can sing along with me let's see let's see how he does if i sing la 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 okay Sorry, because I'm going some, sometimes too deep or too high, but let's let's put it even easier. Enrique, can you give me this note? La. La. Did you hear how he moved his voice at the beginning so that he is searching for it? Like, la. And then he gets it. Sometimes we have to search in our experience, in our memories, or in, for example, in the, in the things that we know, the books that we read, the movies that we watch, to learn to approach to the certain sound, to the certain experience of someone else. What happened, for example, maybe not with tone, but with rhythm. We have to rec sorry, recognize in ourselves if we lag, if we don't follow the rhythm, or if we go too fast. Maybe, you know, uh, when we were explaining this, this idea to some of our colleagues, we were thinking, well, maybe when you have this rhythm of a salespeople, you know, that they are going like, tak, 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 and someone is calling you to sell you something, they will go super fast. And maybe you are calm in your place and you are like, no, no, I have a different rhythm. Let's see if we can uh, synchronize or intonate with the rhythm uh, with a pulse that Enrique is going to show us. Can you put please the next slide so that we have the tree of the rhythms? Thank you, thank you so much. Let's hear the pulse that Enrique is going to share with us. Okay, I'm just gonna put the pulse. Yes, and now you hear. Yet. I'm gonna do it. Okay, let's follow Enrique, okay? The images that you see here, if you are a musician, you know that this is very easy. If not, let's think about this. The first circle means that we are going to clap every four uh, snaps of Enrique, okay? Let's do it. One, two, 
three, four, clap, one, two, four, clap, two, three, four, clap, two, three, four, clap, two, three, and let now let's clap every two snaps of Enrique. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now we clap in every pose. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And if you are so brave, let's clap twice half pose. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, 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 two three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Did you feel more or less in time sharp with the pose that Enrique was making? Do you feel that you were lagging? Do you feel that you were rushing? This very simple exercise in music, we can practice it, I don't know, once a week, twice a week, to more or less remember how are we able to synchronize. That will help us also to understand if we are listening to the rhythm of others and if we are trying to imagine what is happening with another one's experience. We were saying that we are able to be compassionate and we are able to connect whenever we listen to the tone of the rhythm of people. But what happened when actually I don't have the experience to intonate, to be compassionate with someone that has been living something different? For example, I recognize myself as a male. Do I have the human experience to have empathy with a woman that is giving birth? I'm a Mexican that lives in a country that is more or less safe. Do I have the experience to intonate with someone fleeing war, like in Syria? I don't know if I have the experience. I may not have this experience. So compassion has limits. We have to understand this in a very deep and human way. We cannot say that we can be empathetic with everyone in the world because in that, in that way, we may be uh, becoming dishonest with us and with others. Maybe we need to make silence and to learn to share the experience with others, but without making noise, maybe with silence. Think about, uh, I don't know, in a concert, whenever the guitar or a certain instrument has a solo, the other instruments, they get quiet. They get even silent so that the others are having their experience. To be compassionate is not only to listen and intonate and do something, but also sometimes to be compassionate means to be silent and to be a silent companion to people. Understanding this, understanding what happens in the other person, what happens in me, we can go to the, to the third step of this virtuous cycle of compassion, that is harmonize. Finally, to react to do something. I've listened to you, I've imagined and I search in my own human experience. Now, what do I see in front of me and what do I do? Can I react in the correct tone in the correct time? Can I play without noise? What's the opposite of harmony? Noise. What's the opposite of having tones that may be different, but anyway, they can live together, they can combine together. Well, that's nice. When I'm shouting over someone, when I'm too fast and people are too slow or vice versa, when I cannot react to the emotions of others or when I try to react when actually I don't have the human experience to react. For example, here they say opposite to harmony, entropy. That's beautiful. Entropy, chaos, noise. This idea of not following a logos, order, idea, deep connection. Let's exercise now our harmony. Let's exercise now our compassion. What do we do to be compassionate? We listen, we imagine, we recognize if I have it inside myself. And in the end, 
what do I do? I react. My reactions have to be actually in the same way of what is going on in front of me. Let's make a little exercise. If you have a little space there at home, let me move up my chair. You see me here more or less. Thank you. If you have a space in, at home, no, if you can move freely, that would be great. We're going to be dancing a little bit. I'm a Mexican. I was telling you that I'm so sorry, but I try to dance in every occasion I have. I even dance in my lectures at the university or with our clients that Enrique and I we have. So I'm going to invite you to dance. Since I'm Mexican, I love Latin American and Caribbean music. We will play for you a little bit of merengue. I don't know if you know merengue. It is very, very simple. music so that we can feel better. As long as you follow the music of harmony, you can do whatever you want. One, two, one, two. Of course. One, two, one, two. Come on, Enrique, a little bit of shoulders. Yeah, nice. Look, the one, two, I put the one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. What do you say, you know? I adapt myself to the music that someone appears to you next to me. Here's my wife, by the way, she's Polish and she dances better than me. Nice, no? <laughs> what happens? We just have a nice session of dancing in a harmonic way. Maybe I know how to dance better. Maybe you know better than I do. I saw someone from Venezuela. Of course, they know way better than I do. But you know what? A Dominican here, Emily. Oh, come on. You, you should be teaching us this right now. But you know what? Even if we don't uh, if we don't know the rhythm or whatever, we listen to the music. We imagine, okay, can I move at the same rhythm that I'm listening? Yeah, it's not that fast. It's only the one, two, one, two. And from there, can I create some movements that instead of making noise, will be harmonizing with what I'm listening? Yes, of course, I can do it. And if not, no? If I don't want to, if I go to a party and I don't want to dance, I sit and I enjoy how the others are dancing. And that's also being harmonic. That's also being respectful of what is going on. If we want to be compassionate, we need to learn how to harmonize, be silent, listen to the others, and of course, understand myself better to react in the best way possible. Now you can imagine Friday night with Adam here in Mexico. Oof. Well, that's that's it. That's the idea. Listen, intonate, and harmonize to connect and to feel uh, compassion. Uh, now, uh, the one of the last ideas that want to sh that we want to share is that we live in a very difficult environment. Maybe we have to build a more friendly environment so that people can dance because many people are like rushing and, and, and running because they cannot feel this rhythm and this tone. So uh, the next one, we are going to, uh, to close talking about to be compassionate is to intonate and to synchronize. 
And the th synthesis is to harmonize, to make music together. And that's why Adan and I have a band because we make music and that's why we can like go back and forth. We are like very used to, to dance together. I, I have danced with him and I don't want to talk about that, but, and at the end, Adam wants to share uh, an idea in the next slide. Well, of course, talking about compassion is difficult because it implies so many dimensions of our human life. Here we tried to give you some examples and some practices on how music can help us connect better with others and thus being compassionate. To, to close this beautiful experience and, and thanking your attention, we want to share with you a song that you may know already. If, 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 can, you, can you help me to put play and I will be talking a little bit on the video and then we listen to it. This song says, uh, no matter who you are, no matter where you go in your life, at some point you're gonna need somebody to stand by you. Playing for Change was a project uh, that had a, a touristic journalist that was traveling all around the world and everywhere he was traveling, he was finding three musicians that were you know, amazing, super talented. He had this idea of recording them with the same song that was in different places of the world, showing that music can be this bridge, this net, where we connect, and of course with songs that are showing you a deep meaning of interconnection between human beings, well, it's a pleasure to actually listen to these uh, pieces. I recommend you to follow this project, they are, they are called Playing for Change in YouTube. They actually, uh, thanks to these videos and the thing, they have created a lot of uh, schools or uh, music schools for kids in, in underdeveloped areas. So it's great the uh, activities that are created. And of course the message, the message that we need each other. We depend on each other. We need to, to be standing by all. Let's listen a little bit of this beautiful message. As your people come and stand by me And all I'm in the door, I'm in the stand by me Not goodbye, but see you next time. And of course, we open the floor to your uh, questions, to your comments, because we'd love to talk to you. Thank you so much for your attention and for sharing this experience. Wow, amazing guys. 
This was absolutely wonderful. We have comments uh, from the audience saying, bless, for your, bless you for your amazing message. Thank you, music is amazing. It was absolutely fresh experience. Grandioso, thank you very much, beautiful work. This was wonderful, thank you. How can we get in touch with you guys? Thank you so much, thanks a lot. So inspiring. My day has just literally changed. It's a precision from South Africa. Awesome session, guys. And thank you so much for sharing your magic and for sharing everything that you are and you and you connect with. Thank you, you guys. Really, it's it's always a pleasure to talk about this this topic. Sometimes we don't give us the opportunity to talk about music and to talk about deep, deep compassion, deep feelings, and deep virtues. Here, Depthi Vatla she asks how to overcome the challenge of emotional dependency. Of course, um, we are not psychologists, but maybe we can share with you that the, some idea, the idea of the other side. You no, know? first is let's connect and understand that we depend on each other, but also how do how do you have actually your own voice? You are a song by yourself. So of course, whenever we are depending or we feel that we are depending emotionally on others. Maybe we are missing some silence to actually listen to our voice. And silence means maybe to have activities with yourself, reading, exercising, so important, exercising, maybe learning something new and, and always having a time to reflect on your own self. If we make silence, we may discover that our voice is more than enough to fulfill our our life, our meaning. What do you think, Enrique? And, and back to basics, uh, the Greek tradition, the philosophical tradition, uh, advise us to be very strong. I, I mean, physically strong, because you have, uh, you will have the energy to uh, try not to be that dependent. Of course, we all are all interdependent, but if you are a little bit stronger, it will be easier to. Uh, not to be dependent in some relationships that are more difficult. So back to basics, uh, to be stronger every day. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. We have another question from Sarina. How do we support leaders to be compassionate? Many are disconnected and so lose compassion. And this lack of compassion makes them disconnected even more. Yes, we teach, Adan and I, we teach uh, people uh, studying politics, but not also politics, but the government. So they all have this leadership uh, personality. And it's very rough and very, and very difficult because they, as you have said, they are like getting apart and getting far from the citizen, the real citizen. And sometimes they lose this connection. They lose their capability to be compassionate. So. We try them, uh, we try to teach them how to dance, how to express themselves, how to open. We tell themselves that be vulnerable is not the same as being weak. And that is very, very important because if they feel like in the past that if you are vulnerable, people are going to hurt you, they are not going to be uh, able to connect with uh, their team or their people, their so that's a way. No, and, and as Enrique says, nowadays leadership is different. If we try to think about leadership only in a vertical way, when whatever uh, the, the leader says, everyone else will be following, that is not possible anymore. We need to have an horizontal leadership. And actually, that's, that's what Enrique and I, we teach through music, uh, sports, and some ideas of, of classical philosophy. Horizontal leadership means that you have to show yourself, show the motivations and the reasons why you are doing something or why you are giving an order. And of course, as we know, to be the first one to do it. But to be the first one to do it, you have to be open and vulnerable, as Enrique says. And how do we open and how do we become vulnerable? First, making silence and listening to what the others are needing and to actually what I want to really share. Listen, intonate, harmonize. In the end, we have to do it with ourselves, to others, to our team, 
to our family, to our neighborhood, to everyone. Mm -hmm. Totally. And, may and maybe at, at the end, back to basics again, know yourself, know your rhythm, know your tone, know the, your, how you harmonize because people harmonize in different ways. So know yourself and you're going to see how it's more easy to be compassionate and to be subject of compassion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally. We have another question from Tanmay. Can music be a booster to enhance a person's confidence? What's the connection between self-confidence and music? Well, if you if you ask us, really, it's a little bit of, of a trick, you know, because we love music and we actually our friendship and our partnership uh, was created thanks to our musical interests, for example. You know? But if we go a step forward, of course, we can say we cannot say that music makes you a perfect, perfect human being. Oh, but we can actually say that if you devote yourself to have a discipline to learn an instrument, for example or even not learning an instrument, or at least listening with attention to the music that you love and share it with, this, with, with someone else, that will make you more confident on what you are, as Enrique was saying, uh, philosophy 1.0, to know yourself, what do you like, how do you listen to yourself, and then to share. When you are sure of, uh, uh, about what you are and what do you want to share with others, you become more confident and thus more compassionate. So yes, music can help you boost your confidence, listening music in a conscious way, creating music, sharing music. And Adam just said it, it's the same thing in music and in sports. It's a little bit of discipline. So if you are disciplined, you have your routine, your grind, every day you do it, you start to be confident about, about who you are because you, you know that in the next morning, you are going to be there practicing again. So you, you, you start to know yourself, but in the time and you are confident that the next morning, you're going to be the same guy practicing uh, the sports or practicing music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. We have another question from Deepti. How does compassion and empathy helps others? I have provided accommodation and finance for some of my friends when they lost their job, one for a year and a half, one for eight months, and another one for six months. But they felt I stopped their growth. If I had to let go of them earlier, they would have struggled and picked themselves up. And if not me, someone else could have helped them. Maybe I, I, want, I want to answer to this. Maybe it's a middle ground, as Aristotle used to say. I'm sorry to bring Aristotle all the way, because, but I'm a huge fan. But sometimes you, are, you don't have compassion. Of course, you, don't, you are not going to feel their suffering, their lack of a, of, of, of a home, and you are not going to offer your home. But as you just uh, say, if you give a lot of help of someone that needs to help himself, maybe uh, they are going to like get very comfortable. It's a middle ground, it's something very difficult and you have to be very, very, uh, in, in Greek word is pro, uh, phronesis. Is the, to be very, how is the word Adam? To be prudent. To be prudent, to be wise in a way. No? Exactly. So mm -hmm. it's a, uh, there is a middle term, a middle ground. Mm -hmm. uh, fear seems to be on the rise how will music enable this emotion to be removed so that we can become more focused and productive human beings i think th this is a wonderful question because fear is everywhere though i wouldn't say that fear needs to be removed because fear is part of our human experience we learned to survive thanks to fear. Fear sometimes is uh, like a red flag of telling us not do, do not do this or avoid that, I don't know. Do not touch fire because you can burn yourself. So sometimes maybe fear should be acknowledged and music helps us 
to acknowledge a huge variety of emotions. We can even, uh, I don't know, watch a, a horror movie with music and the music is telling us what is going to happen. Music helps us to not be afraid of fear if we, if we are playing with the words. It, to not, I don't know, neglect ourselves from an emotion. Instead of that, recognize it, listen to it, to understand and listen how ourselves, our bodies, our, our minds are reacting to fear and then to have a learning from that. Okay, I fear disappointment. Okay, why do I fear disappointment? What can I do to solve it? It's not about removing the fear. It's about accepting it, acknowledging it, listening to it, and then of course, react in a harmonic way. So of course, music can help us first to understand ourselves and the human experience, and then to be more creative. To, to face the fear, what do, that, what do we do? What, what I don't know, the, the inventors of the plane, maybe they were fearing heights, but they invented a way, they came up with a way of, with this fear, try to impose themselves and then fly. So and, listen, creativity. And as Adam said, like if life is some kind of a song, if we avoid or if we reject bad feelings, uh, we are gonna get maybe a very boring song but because the those strong feelings like nostalgic sometimes fear it helps it helps us to have a more complex symphony so don't reject them as Adan said just try to understand them and in a moment yes uh, <laughs> take a distance from them but don't reject it at the same time because uh, happy symphonies they uh, get a little boring <laughs> sometimes yeah exactly as we were saying there's a moment for everything in life so there are some moments where you need to be afraid when you need to be sad when you need to be angry the important thing is to recognize it and then to continue the flow of the song to go to the next step mm -hmm. totally love this guys yeah from josh from nigeria this session is therapeutic is being compassionate a therapeutic prescription for those facing depression? How can I help people around me? You know, Josh, we have to be very careful when we talk about prescriptions you know, or depression. Depression is a really serious issue that we where we need professionals you know, to help us to understand ourselves. If I break my arm, I would go to the doctor. Also, if someone is feeling depression, let's go and ask professionals. That's uh, something that, that, that we should recognize in ourselves. But of course, compassion helps you to have, to build a meaning of your life. When you focus only on your problems, maybe you are losing something about the human life, about the human experience. But sometimes when you change your focus, not on your on your problems, but also on the things that others may be experiencing, maybe there you find some kind of answer to your questions, some kind of meaning to the search of meaning that you have. So yeah, even if we acknowledge that you that everyone with depression should be following the, the advices of a professional, we could say that being compassionate and helping others and connecting with others can help us to understand ourselves better and to find a better meaning for our lives. It, we, we, with the depression, there is something very important that it's a phase or a kind of apathy. Depression is, is a lack sometimes of feelings. So if you uh, exercise compassion, you start to, to feel again. Sometimes very strong feelings, but you start to feel again. So a way to uh, fight in a, in a very, very uh, difficult, but in a way is to try to be more, more compassionate. You, you also, if you are depressed, I have a friend that she, she, she was, uh, she was suffering from, from depression and she started helping uh, dogs in the street. So she started to feel again and to, uh, with, with, with those environments and, and circumstances of the street dogs. And that, that was a way to manage in a little uh, sense, but that, that's not the, the all the clue, but that is a way to be more compassionate helps you to be less apathic. Mm -hmm. 
Totally. Amazing, guys. We're going to address uh, two more questions and then we need to close up. Um, one is about um, Tan Mei says, can music connect with other people who, who haven't had connection in a very long time? Is it possible to rehabilitate and disconnect connection on and off? Yeah, well, as, as Enrique uh, and I we were explaining, Compassion has limits in our way of acknowledging human experience because I don't know, I'm a, I'm a specific being. I don't have in myself all the universe of human experiences in my life, no? Of course I can read, I can watch movies, I can cultivate myself and art, by the way, helped me to understand better the emotion of others. Anyway, there are some things that I won't be able to share. If there are some people in your life that are a little bit far from you, maybe because of distance, of time, that you haven't been meeting them uh, frequently and so on. Maybe there are not so many things that you can share with them, but there will be some others. I have some friends that I only, that I only visit every Christmas. Every Christmas because they're my friends from, from my primary school. We don't have a lot in common, but anyway, there's some relationship that is following through time. And every time we see each other, that is once a year or maybe once every two years, we share a great moment, we laugh, we have memories, and we continue. It is possible, of course, but we have to recognize our own limits, and it's normal, and it's okay. And remembering not to push compassion. And the honest, mm -hmm. the most honest way to connect and to feel and to be compassionate is knowing, as Adan said, your limits. Because sometimes you say, I want to be compassionate with everyone. No, the most honest way to be compassionate is to acknowledge when you cannot be compassionate. And, um, as Adan said, you can be a silent companion. And that's a very, very strong way to connect, to be in silent and, to, and just to be there. That's actually a great way to close this because it connects with the last question that it's about how can we maintain a good balance between compassion for others and self-compassion for ourselves? Where is that boundary between me and others? I have an idea here only to, to close this question. What about instead of putting them in the two extremes of a balance, you know, of a balance game, why don't we think them as a coin of two sides? Compassion with yourself and compassion with others, they come from the same, from the same human experience of listening the emotions that are happening around us and that are happening inside us. I cannot share, uh, I don't know, my energy of helping others if that energy is not coming from somewhere in me. And of course, if I help others, I become better. Maybe it's, it's a little bit risky to say that being compassionate is, is, is to be selfish. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, instead of putting them in two extremes, let's think of them as the, the, the two sides of the same coin. Compassion is something that expresses everything in our human experience, what we experience inside us and what, what we experience in others. And as Enrique was explaining, through art, we understand that there is no me or there is no you. There is always a we. There is always an us. A, a we and an us is another perspective to see reality. We sometimes in the past see reality like a mechanism when you see the problem between the self and the community. But nowadays we know that reality, the society is more like an organism. We share uh, our organic boundaries. So if you are compassionate with yourself, you're going to exercise your muscle uh, of, of compassion and it's going to be easier to be compassionate with, uh, with people around you. So uh, exactly as Adan said, don't see it like if there is, a, there is a problem between them. There is an organism, uh, organic relationship. Mm. Very interesting. Thank you so much, Adana and Enrique, and everyone who has joined the session today from around the world. This was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for your time, your energy, and your content. We had such an incredible community here, people connecting from Mexico, from Venezuela, from Sri Lanka, from India, from Rwanda, from India, from many other wonderful, wonderful countries around the world. 
We encourage you to follow us on Instagram and YouTube for the latest news. And please feel free to enter your feedback form because all kinds of suggestions help us to deeply improve. Our next session will be next Wednesday, July 7th, same time as today, with Daniela Rivera Torres. She is a green entrepreneur. She has co-founded Chance to Challenge, which is a leading sustainable travel agency which donates 50% of profits to water and nature-related projects. She is currently the director of La Cañada, a sustainable and groundbreaking initiative carried out alongside the public sector and grassroots communities of Los Dynamos to regenerate the forest, create awareness, and rescue the last breathing river of Mexico City, the Magdalena River. She is also a dedicated hiker, a yogi that has a vivid passion for exploring nature's wildest places. In next week's session, we will talk about the transformation of self and society to become more deeply connected to nature and the multiple ways we can do that in our lives. A lot of researching and documenting has been done on the positive impact of nature on human flourishing, our social, psychological, and emotional life. Being in nature and living near nature can have a positive impact on our brains, bodies, feelings, thought processes, and social interactions. Therefore, having a positive impact on our relationship with the planet. We will talk about her personal realization on how traveling in a responsible and sustainable way has been amazing, as well as being in connection with nature can be an essential part of the evolution of our world and the evolution of us as human beings. Click on the link in the, in the chat to register. And for June Digital Experience, Yanni, please welcome. Please come on, on camera with me. We wanted to bring to the table the essence of our life as human beings, stories and conversations, because we believe we can change the world one conversation at a time. Yes, uh, we will be so happy to uh, be with you in this space, the stories before answer experience, uh, have more about the ideas and the the music and the compassion of Adana and Enrique and the other amazing speakers that we have in Luan. So come with us. Uh, the, the time on Wednesday are, is so short that we need a, a space with more amplitude, with more um, capability to, to deep in these topics and to learn to, to to, to how to transform our life and our our community. So don't miss this opportunity and came to come, come to this experience, Stories Before Answers. You have all the information in the chat and we will uh, be so uh, amazed if you will be part of this uh, private community. Yes, come join us. It will be a fantastic opportunity full of content, new speakers, guides, toolkits and daily content in a private and virtual space. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, thank you, Adan. Thank you, Enrique. Thank you, Yanni. And thank you, everyone who joined today from Many Ways Parts of the World. Have a fantastic afternoon, a great evening, and a wonderful rest of the day. Stay safe and stay very welcome. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank so you. Bye-bye. That's great music, everyone. <laughs>